Hello, what's up YouTube? Running with it and natural and in this tutorial I'll show you guys the best way to use your mixer brush tool in Photoshop. So I'm going to be showing you guys where to mix and where not to mix when you're using a mixer brush tool and how to locate those areas where you want to blend or even out the skin tones in your images. So this tutorial is for you guys who have been asking me or having issues about the use of a mixer brush tool. So let's kick in and we start learning about this wonderful information that I'm about to share with you guys. So as you can see, I already removed uh, most of the blemishes from the image. So the rest of the blemishes that are remaining, I'll be using frequency separation to remove those blemishes, but that is not the major emphasis of this very video. So first of all, I'm going to create two layers by hitting Ctrl Command J on the keyboard. And as usual, name this low. And I'm going to name this high layer. Hi, remember frequency separation divides the image into two layers. This is going to contain the colors and the skin tones, and the high frequency layer is going to be containing our textures. So, deactivate the high frequency layer and uh, select the low frequency layer. Then come to filter, then come to blur, and come to Gaussian blur. So, we want to remove uh, the details from this low frequency layer. So make sure you zoom out and look for that area that has more textures than the rest of the skin. Remember, your results for the mixer brush tool are going to highly depend on this very step. That's why I wanted to show you guys the initial steps before we do uh, the mixer brush tool. So we're just going to come and look for that area. And I think this area has more textures than the rest of the image. So make sure you start moving this radius because... The textures we blur out are going to be majorly the textures that we are going to be retaining back when we start evening out the skin tone using the mixer brush tool. I'm just going to come to the radius and just start moving it up to a point when these textures are disappearing from the image and we can no longer see them evidently in this particular image. So I think we're just going to go a little more. I think at around 8 we have... I remove these textures and we can no longer see and as you can see right on the image uh, we can only see the colors but we can still notice the facial structures so this is very important and you should also not cram this radius because different cameras capture different sharpness or different details on the image so the lower the megapixels and maybe the aperture used are uh, the lower the quality of the image and the less of the details that you're going to be having in the images and uh, vice versa. So I'm just going to hit OK and select the high frequency layer and activate it. Remember it is a 16-bit image. Then I'm going to come to image and come to apply image. So when you come to apply image, you're going to be getting this window open right here and it has apply image right on top. So after doing that, Come and select the low frequency layer. Remember, when we are blurring out the textures from this layer, we hit them in a storage that is embedded in the low frequency layer. So come and select it. Then when you want to choose the blending mode uh, for an 8-bit image, let me first show you guys the setting for the 8-bit image. Come and change the blending mode from uh, mouth ply and change it to subtract this is for an 8-bit image make sure the opacity is 100 preserve transparency and mask are not checked or marked right here the scale is 2 and offset 128 the reason for doing this is because we want to put the textures on this 50 percent gray layer right here so that's why we divide the colors in the rgb that is 256 divided by 2 you get the offset which is 128 Always make sure the invert option is not checked and the previous on. So on the previous on, you're going to notice that all your textures are going to be on this gray kind of layer and simply hit OK. But since this is not an 8-bit image, you're just going to select the low frequency layer and change the blending mode from uh, whatever it is to add. So opacity is 100. The scale has to be 2 and offset 0. Make sure preserve transparency and mask are not checked. So for an 8-bit image, the blending is subtract and you have scale is 2 offset 128 and you don't invert this. But since this is a 16-bit image, 
The blending has to be add or pass 100, preserve transparency and mask are not marked or checked. And the scale has to be 2 and offset 0 and the difference here, you have to come and check uh, this invert option and simply hit OK. So after doing that, you're going to notice that the te textures are on this gray kind of layer. Simply come to the blending mode and change it from a normal and change it to linear light because we want to get back the image uh, the way it was initially before. So I'm just going to select both layers and hit Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard to group them. I'm going to name that uh, frequency separation. So when I turn this on and off, you can see the image is still there, but since we started our frequency separation from the blemish removal layers, that's why you can notice that difference. Then I'm going to come to, here is where you have to pay attention because the major emphasis for this tutorial starts right now. Come and select the high frequency layer and come to the blending mode. Remember, we want to create a black and white layer on top of the high frequency layer. So in Photoshop, when you select a layer and you want to create another layer, that layer will, will be on top of the selected layer. So come the high frequency layer and come the adjustments and create or click a black and white. And now here is where you have to uh, notice uh, the changes. So when you do this, the image is going to turn into black and white. But as you can see, we can not see any details or skin tone imperfections until we come to the red channel so when you left click on this box right here or this icon right here and move it your so you click and move it towards the left hand side you're going to start noticing those uneven skin tones but don't take it way overboard so just leave it just take it up to a point when you're starting to notice these uneven skin tones right here so remember when you're using a mixer brush tool we're just going to be evening out these or blending these uneven skin tones so let me just close this and after you have created that black and white layer come and select the low frequency layer since this is the layer that is going to be containing the the skin tones rather that we are going to be evening out in this particular image so come to under the brushes uh, brushes and select your mixer brush tool so when you select the mixer brush tool, always, always and always make sure that your caps lock key is turned off. And when it is on, you're going to notice that your tool is going to be like this cross icon. So just make sure you turn off the caps lock key and you'll get back the brush looking where it is meant to be. So for other versions of Photoshop, you may be having your uh, mixer brush tool under these settings. So you simply right click and look for mixer brush tool. So right now, after we have selected that tool, we want to set it in a way that is going to be retaining uh, the textures, but as well evening out the skin tones in this particular image. So how we're going to be doing that, we're going to simply come and make sure that, uh, the brush is a clean one. So click here and drop down and now make sure it is a clean brush. So we have two options right here. So the very first option is going to be load the brush after each and every stroke. Remember, when we are trying to blend or even out the tones right here, we don't want the brush to carry any color because if at all it carries color from this shadow area and it carries it to the highlights, first of all, the original skin formation or skin details or skin tones is going to be distorted. And secondly, it is also going to alter the shape of the model's face. Remember, that shape is highly determined by the colors of the skin and the way light has fallen on particular areas of the skin. So make sure that you don't check this option and we need the second option because we want Photoshop to automatically clean the brush after we have blended a particular area. So after you have selected this, you're going to notice that it is going to be in this black box. So how we set up the mixer brush tool, I have tried and tested this mixer brush tool. The wetness you are going to be using a wetness of around 9 because if you use a high wetness, it means that your brush is going to be too wet. And when you start blending a color right on the skin area, it is going to be spilling that color to 
other areas since it is a wet brush. It's like when you're trying to mop somewhere and your rug has more, it is wet or it is too wet. It means that when you start mopping, that water in the rug is going to be spilling even more to other sides. So that's why you have to limit the wetness of the mixer brush tool when you are going to even out the skin tones. So the load you are going to be using 75%, the mix is going to be 90 and the flow at 100. So make sure that sample all layers is not marked or checked because we only want to deal uh, with the tones that are embedded on the low frequency layer. We're just going to now slightly zoom in. So I think that is too much. So make sure you don't over zoom in the image because we want to see every tiny spot that has and even skin tones in the image so that we can blend those particular areas or even out those tones. So for those who have been asking uh, where to know or how to know where to blend and not to blend, this is why you have to pay maximum attention. So you can see we have, if at all I try to zoom in for you, I, ho I hope you guys can see we have these kind of patches right here and we have some kind of patch it is really dark i hope you can see it right here we have a dark patch right there then when it comes to the forehead we have this dark patch right here and we have i hope you can see these dark patches right here so every patch that is not where it is meant to be you have to blend that patch so that it can slightly match with its surrounding or each area where it is so let me show you guys what I mean by this. I'm just going to zoom out, Command minus or Control minus to zoom out. And in order to increase on the sizes of your mixer brush tool, when you're going to start blending, make sure you use the brackets after, after rather the P key on the keyboard. So when you're done doing that, make sure you have a reasonable size and start evening out the skin tones. So basically we are going to left click and when you hold down the left click button just hold it down it means that you're, you'll be pressing over the image or over the skin tones in the image so when you try to move it up and down if at all you're using a mouse you're going to notice that it's going to be applying or blending colors in that particular area so let me just reduce on the size and blend this area so you can see what we are doing. So let me come to this part and I show you guys how we can eliminate it using the Mr. Brush tool. So left click and hold down. Yeah, just left click, actually left click press. Yeah, I think that is a better option. And start moving this up and down until that part uh, dissolves into the surrounding area. So increase on the size and come and even out these other neighboring areas just like that and when it comes to the borders of a different tone simply come and blend that border so that it can have a nice transition just like that so we have this area right here which is really confusing so just increase on the brush slightly and start blending or continue blending to get rid of those and even skin tone so we have a highlight just blend it alone and as you're blending make sure you blend the highlights alone the mid-tones alone and the shadows alone in a particular image so just do that so let me turn off the black and white to show you guys what we have done so far in this image so when you turn off the frequency separation by uh, clicking on this eye icon you can notice that we have just evened out on the skin tones on that forehead area let me try to zoom in before and after you can see we have just gotten rid of those uneven skin tones but we have on the other hand retained uh, the skin tones and the textures in the images so let's just continue doing that on a different area so turn on the black and white and make sure you have selected the low frequency layer and just reduce on the size because we want to blend a smaller area and just continue evening out uh, those skin tones so I'm basically left clicking 
and moving uh, the cursor from uh, down like top to down depending on the area I am blending you can see when I came to this area since this is moving like this I did not blend it like this I just moved it like this way so let's just uh, blend this uh, shadow area and just blend it like that so you can as well come this side and when you feel like if you can no longer see the uh, uneven tone simply double click right here and you can brighten up the image a little bit and close it and now come and select the low frequency layer and just continue evening out on the skin tones in the image just like that so let's turn this off and we see the before and after before after before after you can see we have just evened out on the skin tones of the image and i forgot to tell you that you guys if at all you don't want to use the black and white it is all well you can work without it uh, because if at all you really trust your site but i do love using the black and white because right now i can clearly see where to blend or even out the tones just going to come to the nose area and just continue evening out on the skin tones uh, right on the nose area just like that so reduce on the size and come this side and you can see i'm moving up and down because the nose is shaped like in up and up down kind of a uh, direction so that's why i'm moving my brush up and down when it comes to uh, the nose area just like this so let's see the before and after let me zoom out slightly i re remove this and you can see the before and the after before after we have just even doubt on the tones in this particular area so when you're done doing all that uh, you can as well use the mr brush tool alone but i prefer to combine it with uh, the lasso tool method to finally or give an image a more cleaner look because when using a mixer brush tool it tends to or you tend to forget to blend some areas so just make sure that you have selected the low frequency layer and after you have used the mixer brush tool on the overall image simply come to the lasso tool feathering is 22 pixels but you're still on the low frequency layer but this time around you don't need the black and white layer so don't turn it on and come and select or make a selection on the skin area of a model and when making this selection make sure that you only select uh, the skin area and how it is shaped you can see this area is shaped in this format that's why i've been able to select it and as you're making this selection make sure you select the skin area alone not the eyebrows or the hair of the model and you have to keep away from the edges of uh, the image so simply come back to filter and come to blur and come to gaussian blur so at this step you have to move this radius up to a point when you are feeling that you have a better skin texture for your image so just come and start moving this radius so this is the original radius we had when we are creating our frequency separation group or layers so just left click and move this towards the right hand side so you have to click and move as you're releasing so that you can see the effect on the skin area i'm just going to uh, move this i think at 24 it is really nice and uh, the skin textures really look nice and even and this has further blended the skin tones even more so it is more of a fine tuning process for your images and simply hit ok so you can hit ctrl or command d to deselect and you can see the before and after for our skin retouching or our mixer brush tool and lasso tool method so this is all for today's tutorial and i hope you guys have learned the best way to use and apply the mixer brush tool and to know how to, how and where to blend or even out the tones on your images this is all for today's tutorial and if at all you have loved this tutorial don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you have been watching from this channel for the very first time Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet another trail. And don't forget to keep practicing, don't give up and keep creating.